Oh. The fight for equality in the U.S. military. Allowing women to fight in direct combat will improve the equality of men and women in the United States military. Historical background. Starting back to the Civil War, when women have been serving as nurses, helping women men. In 1917, Loretta Walsh became the first woman to replace, but it wasn't until 1948 that a law that was passed that made women a per permanent part of military services. 1965, the first WAC officers were signed into Vietnam. In 1967, they were allowed to serve in the National Guard. 1983, women were allowed to fly helicopters in direct combat. 1994, the Pentagon passed a policy stating all service members are allowed to serve any role, any combat or non combat except for women. Women cannot serve in roles that engage in direct conflict or combat. This graph shows right here 200,000 200, active duty women in the military, 68,000 Army, 57,000 Navy, 58,000 Air Force, and only 14,000 in the Marine Corps. 60 flag officers, 21 in the Air Force, 20 in the Navy, 19 in the Army. As of right now, there are 2,600 cadets, 9,000 are currently deployed, and 90% of the military is open to the women. This is a graph of the history of women at war. Starting in Korea, there's only a thousand, and then Vietnam, there's seven thousand, and then 1990s in the dead and storm, it jumps up to 41,000. All these right here is this. This is post 9/11, and it jumps dramatically up to 282,000, showing how patriotic women truly are when conflict comes to our country. Women have been fighting for equality since 1848 when the women's rights movement first began. And in 2015, the U.S. government finally removed long-standing restrictions on women's roles in the military by opening up combat positions to women. This has allowed women to fight for the United States military while also continuing to fight for equality. Many people believe that with proper training, women should be allowed to qualify for any position in the military. It is important that women are able to fight because women make up one half of the population of the United States and one fifth of the United States military. This does not necessarily mean that the United States military should lower their standards to allow women to qualify, but every woman should at least have the opportunity to fight if they so desire. Giving women the chance to fight on the front lines also shows that the United States is moving forward as a society. Sexism, sexism is a big deal in today's society, so it's important that the United States is taking these steps towards equality. Many could argue that if the military, if the United States integrated women into the military, there would be a negative impact on unit cohesion. However, a study by the Rand Corporation, a think tank that studies military and societal issues, proves otherwise. The study named New Opportunities for Military Women Effects Upon Readiness, Cohesion, and Morale concluded that gender integration has a relatively small effect on these attributes. On the other hand, it was found that attributes such as training and leadership proved more influential than the others. Even though this is a big problem for the United States, it is also a very big problem in other countries. Jennifer Whitmore, a senior officer in the Royal Australian Navy, expresses her belief that to remove the barriers to women's full and equal participation in armed forces and in conflict, perceptions that men are natural warriors and women are natural peacemakers need to be debunked. If the Australian military can focus on this issue, then why can't the United States military do the same? As Rachel said, the idea that men are better fighters than women needs to be revoked. Because of this idea, men are trained harder than women, which is unfair. For example, the required number of push-ups for men is 71, while women only have to do 42. Also, women have almost three more minutes to complete a two-mile run than men. This allows for men to receive more training, therefore making the military less equal. By eliminating all of these differences, the U.S. military will become more equal, which will eventually eventually open all jobs to women. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, the man that signed the order that lifted the military's ban, believes there is no distinction that's made between the sacrifices of men and women in uniform. This demonstrates that even the person who lifted the military ban believes that soldiers are equal no matter what gender they are. Even though many people believe that male and female soldiers are equal, many facts disprove this belief. For example, 
Marshal Daniel McKenzie, author of Let Women Fight, ending the U.S. military's com female combat ban, points out that after lifting the ban, still 7.3% of military jobs are still closed to women. Eliminating all of these job exclusions is essential to create an equal playing field for male and female soldiers. Anne Dunwoody, who served 38 years in the Army and is the first four-star general in the U.S. military, even got treated unfairly because of her gender. In a Time article, Dunwoody explains how the Army banned bobby pins and barrettes, which women used to keep their hair in place under helmets, as an attempt to get women to shave their heads and look more manly. As a revolt, Dunwoody taped her hair to her head using masking tape. That was so significant because it showed how passionate Dunwoody was about her job and eventually eventually led to the lifting of the ban of bobby pins and barrettes in the Army. This was another great step towards the U.S. military becoming equal towards men and women folks. A quote is up here. A recent study from the Rand Corporation found that women were less likely to be promoted than men at their levels. For example, about 25% of white men became majors in their career, but only about 31% of white women do. Using Sim Corporation, as Rachel used before, they claim that 45% of white men become majors, but only 31% of white women do. That's that might not seem like a big percentage, but it is. Especially when it comes down to equality. You want to be as equal as you can. However, well, because of opportunities not being as equal, that just doesn't make men, men and women equal in the military. However, the pay is equal. The Equal Pay Act of 1968 is the federal law. It's exactly how it sounds. Men and women get paid the same amount for the same job and the same quality work. Despite the Equal Pay Act being a federal law, most companies don't actually use it in regular economy jobs. But the military, they absolutely need to because they are funded by the government. Thus, women have achieved equality in pay, but there are so many more <coughs> aspects still to be reached. Barriers are still to be broken, ideas to be shattered of women in the military, Change will come and more quality will be the result. Solutions and limitations. Possible solutions. Eliminate job restrictions against women in all branches of the military. To make more, if not all, positions in the military available to women. Available to women. Limitations, it may take a long amount of time to eliminate all and any discrimination against women in the military, but solutions will not go into a new effect. Finish your work, say. Okay, a couple of questions for you. I'm going to start with Anna. <clears throat> so, Anna, in what way did you improve your ability to work with a group as a result of this project? Um, I improved my ability to work with the group because I um, improved my communication and, like, trying to make plans so we could rehearse. Yeah. Okay, Rachel. Um, what do you think is the strongest counter argument to the solution or conclusion that your team identified and why? I believe that our, strong, that our strongest counter was how Allison mentioned the, that the equal pay of women and men in the military already make it as equal as possible and how since they have equal pay, they already, they don't, have to take any more steps towards equality because that makes them as equal as they can be. Thank you. Okay, and Cole, um, how did the group decide to include Allison's lens um, in the overall presentation? Allison's lens was important because um, when we just have the document about just showing that women are not equal, we have to have counter to it that shows that there is not just a bias to it, and she said that there has to be equal pay in the military, otherwise the military would, the two groups wanted 
The military wanted function without their men and women always arguing who has the better pay. So her counter argument works. Okay. And finally, Allison, describe how the content of the team presentation was changed as a result of group discussion. Well, when we came together, originally we had this great idea, and after the meeting, we just decided that it wasn't going to work as well, and we decided to make a few changes to make the way it looked better and the way it sounded better, so it just, after we came together, it just improved so much. Okay, thank you.